for our next trip out on the show floor, we are headed to the Pitch Ice Arena, Ice London's showcase for industry startups. Now, the startup ecosystem has been a part of Clarion Gaming's events going as far back as 2009. Many companies featured in Pitch Ice have gone on to secure investment, be acquired, or evolved into businesses that now take stands on the exhibition floor. Some that have featured previously are the likes of AI specialists, Fakes, free-to-play provider Chalkline Sports, and even Victory, which now forms the basis of US streaming service, Fubo's TV expansion into gaming. This year, there is a wide range of companies on show at Pitch Ice, 14 in total, offering solutions ranging from player protection providers, gaming developers, Ragtech products, and more. And we're headed over to speak to Marcel Tobler, Chief Strategy Officer of Stud Casino, Barden Group, who was responsible for selecting the 14. Joining Marcel is Jesse Learmonth, one of the arena's hosts and founder of the Betting Startups podcast. They're over with Andy now. Let's go and find Andy on the show floor. Hello, Andy. Hello, Katie. Yes, welcome to the show floor for what's uh, proving to be an exciting two days already for Ice London 2022. And as you say, I've been joined by two of the main men here. I have Marcel and Jesse, as you very nicely introduced. Guys, first of all, welcome to Ice 365 Live. Thank you. It's great to be here. It's great to be here in April. It's warm outside. Amazing show. Fantastic to be here. Just nice to be back at ICE after a one-year hiatus. Let's not make that a habit. <laughs> well, we'll all agree with that. Uh, so let me start with you, first of all, Marcel. What are your thoughts on the breadth and quality of the companies featured at this year's Pitch Ice? Because you did all the selecting. Yeah, so I thought it was really a pity that not more startups actually could get a chance to be here because I really thought they deserved to have this opportunity to present their idea, to present their business um, case to the audience, to the industry. And that shows how good uh, actually um, the quality was from the startups applying if you feel, oh, there should have been more startups today here at the pitch. Yeah, and I mean, for me, this is my, I think, 11th ice, and I've been coming to some various incarnation of the pitch competition every year. And certainly for me, this year was the highest quality I've seen. And I think the word for me is the diversity of the startups that were there yesterday at the pitch competition. And the entrepreneurs, the diversity of ideas is really, I think, a product of the diversity of, you know, the ge geographical reach of the, uh, the entrepreneurs. And as well, great to see some female-led startups yesterday. And uh, really exciting, and I think it's just a wonderful reflection of the direction that the industry is headed. Uh, and Marcel, what sort of criteria were you looking for to apply to the submissions when you were choosing them for this year? I mean, I guess it's pretty standard, right? I mean, the team really matters. I mean, you can have the best idea. It's nothing worth if you don't execute it properly. And I think the more complex our world gets, the more technology-driven, the more important is execution and the people behind the idea to execute it right. And in terms of those submissions, anything in particular that you were looking out for from the startups this year? Yeah, so I'm thinking about it a little bit in terms of um, what I like to call sort of like the overall GDP of the industry, right? Which I borrow liberally from a company called Stripe, which is a very successful company in the US. And that's their mission statement. And I like to apply that lens to the betting industry. And the total addressable market, I think, really is going to be fueled by two things. One is attracting new individuals into the industry to work. And again, yesterday we saw some fantastic startups doing a lot of great work in terms of bringing new talent into the industry. And of course, the other part of that is, you know, Delivering new product concepts is going to attract new customer segments to the industry. And again, I think we saw some great concepts yesterday that are really going some distance to bring new customers into the industry. And staying with you, Jesse, were there any particular areas of the industry that you think innovation is, is lacking or verticals that are in need of some new ideas? Yeah, certainly. So I think, um, you know, some things I have been seeing recently and I'm very excited that we're finally seeing is innovation in what I'm sort of calling less sexy areas. So things like compliance technology, a lot of focus this year on responsible gaming, which is fantastic. Um, you know, payments, KYC, anti-fraud, the things that maybe fly under the radar a little bit when we tend to get excited about the actual consumer facing product, the stuff under the surface is what's really been lacking in the innovation department. And I'm very happy to see we're making some great progress there as well. And from a land-based perspective, how does that change your view of the innovation and technological advances that are taking place? I think what we, what we are seeing now is a, is a change of our, I say, industries. 
Because before we had like an online industry and we had the lamp-based industry and they were almost two different industries because most of the lamp-based operators were due to the reg regulation not able to go online. And that is changing. With the local regulation of online gaming, this is changing. And I think it's a great opportunity for the industry overall to create an omni-channel experience. We are not there yet. We are really just at the beginning of that. For me, it's, it's kind of industry change. And I really would hope we have more startup focusing on the omni-channel experience land-based and online, this has um, a big chance, in my view, in the future for our industry. And how do you prioritise your investments, Jesse? Are you looking for businesses that you feel you can immediately disrupt with, or do you want to, to start to nurture something to come into the gaming industry? It's an interesting question because I think the natural default tendency for entrepreneurs is to disrupt, right? And there's this romanticism around disrupting the incumbents and the status quo and really challenging that status quo. But I think the reality is, when you get grounded in the reality of startup life, you find it's a much longer slog than you might have anticipated at the beginning. And I think, you know, taking that longer view is important. And while you have to have that enthusiasm of wanting to immediately change things, the reality is that change doesn't happen overnight. And, you know, many startups have to take that longer view and adapt. I fully agree with you, you know, we are in a regulated industry, regulation takes time, um, so I think it's important to have a, a vision, an idea, but I think also it's very important to get the product on the ground, to get the product to the consumer, to, to get experience on, on how the product lives in the market with a long-term experience. But I think it's really important to be able to get to the market soon with, with the first product instead of planning 10 years ahead. So you're talking about there taking the long view. How long a view do you industry investors take, for example, when you're looking to do those investments? Because there's a lot of talk, obviously, about Web3 technology. Is that something that's of interest? Absolutely. I mean, everything should be of interest, right, is the reality. And, you know, it's to the peril of an investor if they're ignoring certain trends or what's, you know, what might look like a toy now ends up becoming a tool in five years' time. So, you know, um, Web3 being one example that is very uh, buzzwordy right now, um, it looks like a toy right now. I think in three, five, seven years' time, it's going to be a very foundational component of the industry. And I think that's just one of many examples right now. Yeah, I believe it's, we have to be, be careful not to fall into the traps on focusing too much on buzzwords. Uh, today, every, every math formula is uh, AI. Um, and I'm always careful if, if um, startups just drop those words. But I think, I believe behind all those buzzwords is something we can take out of it and apply it in a real business case for the future. Okay, Marcel, thank you very much for your time. Jesse as well, good to have you here. Thank you, Andy, appreciate it. Just before we go, What's your thoughts on this year's Ice London 2022? It's had a really good vibe with it, hasn't it? 100%. Um, you know, I think there's just a, a jubilation and enthusiasm from everybody here. Obviously, a lot's changed in the last two years from an industry perspective. And I think now that we're all together under the same roof once again, there is a level of excitement I haven't seen in a number of years. So really excited. I think we also learned a lesson, right? I mean, to, to get to know each other on a personal level, it's so important. That's what makes our industry, industry so great. So it's uh, amazing to be back. Okay, guys, thank you very much indeed. Okay, we're going to go back to the studio now. Very shortly for you here on ICE 365 Live, we have the CEO question time. Stay tuned.